Hi, I'm Denise from Renewed Homestead, and today we are processing a little bit of history. So come along with us. So today we are processing our candy roasters, and we want to thank uh, Richard at Lavender Homestead for the candy roasters. Um, this is our little guy that we got. <laughs> um, the rest of them have been cut up as you can see. Now candy roasters grow anywhere from five pounds to 250 pounds, so they can get ginormous. Unfortunately, the deer got all of ours this year, so that little guy is all we had. Um, but as you can see, we're saving seeds so we can grow them again next year. But the candy roaster is really interesting. Um, from what I've been able to research, it is native to Southern Appalachia. So the Cherokee Indians used it throughout Georgia, Tennessee, and the Carolinas. Um, and they really enjoyed it not only for its sweet flavor, hence the name candy roaster, um, but also because it stores really well. well. It's a winter squash, and so they would be able to save these and then eat them um, in the middle of winter. Um, it can be uh, frost hardy, uh, a cold, uh, like a hard frost, if it gets really cold, um, might not survive, but it can handle a light frost, so it's a really hardy squash. And there are some that say that the Cherokee Indians usually just take it, throw it on the ground, and then just roast it whole like that in pieces. Um, not sure if that's true, but that's what they say. Um, so the Appalachian people learned how to use the candy roasters from the Cherokee Indians, and they actually use this for their pumpkin pies and uh, pumpkin treats, squash soups, things of that nature. So they call it a candy roaster pumpkin. Um, so we're going to show you today um, how we're processing them, um, an easy way to steam them, to get the skin off, um, and then we freeze ours. Uh, so come along with us today as uh, we take you along and show you how to process a candy roaster. To show you an easy way to actually uh, process pumpkin for canning or for freezing. Now my mom used to spend three or four days um, doing this in the oven. It would take forever. Now it's still a messy job but it's a lot faster if you actually do it in uh, this is our what is this like our ninja pressure cooker air fryer. Yep. It's kind of like an instapot. Um, and so I do the pumpkin in here now. Now today we're actually doing candy roaster pumpkin. Um, so we've already scraped out the insides and we're getting ready to put them in um, the pressure cooker or Ninja Foodie, whatever, whatever you want to call it, the Instapot. Pressure cooker will work too. Pressure, yes, pressure cooker will work too. So essentially easy way to do this, you want about a cup of water. We have the strainer basket in here. Oops, now I'm dripping all over the floor. Just throw your pieces in. I have found it best if it's flush side up. Once it's full, top on we're gonna do high pressure some people do it for 10 minutes I have found 12 minutes works perfect for us um, I'm not sure if it's the altitude or what don't forget 
forget to turn your steam button closed. Yes. And that's it. We're going to wait for it to build pressure. Um, it'll take about 12 minutes and then we're going to let it sit for about five minutes before we pull the pressure off. And I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Typically, I let this go five minutes. It's been about seven minutes. Got a little distracted. It happens. No worries. But now... All right. See, nice and soft. So now we're going to pour them into a bowl. We're going to let them cool. We'll peel them, get them in the food processor, and they're ready to go in the freezer. All right, so I want to show you some of these have cooled a little, but you can see how easily this is peeling here. And then once we get them all peeled, see, look at that, just comes right off. And then once it's we're done peeling, we're gonna put them in the food processor and then get them in the bags. So what are you going to do with all those seeds and scraps? Well, some of the seeds we've saved. So as y'all know, save your seeds. Um, the rest of this is gonna go to the chickens and they will love us for it. Oh yes. Nice and pureed. All right, so little trick we do. Um, I do two cups per bag, um, and we just take a the freezer bag that we're going to freeze it in, put it in a cup with a funnel. Our canning funnel, so it's wide mouth. And there you go. It helps so you don't get all messy. Squeeze the air out and freeze it flat so they stack up nicely in the freezer. Yep, exactly. The nice thing about candy roasters, they don't have a lot of string and they've got a good amount of seeds, but it's not as flushy as some of the other pumpkins. So it's, it's there's not a lot of waste and it's really easy to clean them out. Thank you so much for joining us today. As you can see, I've got a huge mess to clean up now. We've got our white pie pumpkin in here now. All the candy roasters are done. Um, and let us know if you have any candy roaster recipes. If you have any favorite recipes you'd like to share, candy roaster or pumpkin, uh, we love to try out new recipes and we love to see yours. Um, with candy roasters, one more quick point. Um, you want to let them sit for about three months or so, two to three months. Um, cause the longer they sit, uh, the sweeter they're going to become. Um, so it's great that they're a winter squash cause they can, um, lay out, uh, without spoiling, uh, for a few months. Uh, obviously you don't want them to spoil, but I believe it's about two to three months and they will be at the peak of ripeness and, uh, they will be at their sweetest. Uh, so thanks again for joining us. Um, let us know if you've heard of candy roasters. I'd love to hear in the comments. I know we had never heard of them until we got to Appalachia. So y'all have a great weekend. Uh, God bless. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, y'all.